so what you see is that you get a pattern output as a consequence of chance processes. And so where you happen to be on the distribution for all of the traits that we've described is a consequence of innumerable chance genetic, pro genetic and cultural processes. But a lot of them are, a lot more than people like to admit, are genetic. I mean, you can make people stupider with the environment, but it's not that easy to make them smarter. So, because it's, w w think about it, right? It's way easier to make something worse than it is to make something better. And so even if you take everyone and you give them optimal um, access to information and say optimal nutrition, which pretty much everybody's in that position now, at least insofar as we can manage it, you're going to get massive genetic differences in, in such things as conscientiousness or extroversion or intelligence. And as you, in fact, as you flatten out the sociocultural environment, say you take everybody and you provide them with optimal nutrition and optimal access to information, which you've pretty much done, by the way, with a computer, right? Because how are you going to give someone more access to information than to give them a web-enabled computer? That's it, right? There's there's just no better, it's an infinite library. You can learn anything with it. So we're done, we've equalized the educational landscape, roughly speaking. And then nutritionally, well, you know, yeah, some people eat badly and some people eat better, but the option to eat well is basically open to at least everybody in North America, roughly speaking. You've wiped out the socio sociocultural variation. You might think, well, that equalizes people. It's wrong. All it does is reduce the variability to the remaining biological differences. You maximize the genetic variability by minimizing the sociocultural variability. Right? Very important thing to understand. This is why the gender differences between personality between men and women are largest in the Scandinavian countries. Right? Tens of thousands of people have been assessed along these dimensions. We know the, we know the, the, the data that have come in are clear. The biggest differences between men and women in the world, in terms of personality and in terms of interest, are in the Scandinavian countries. Why? Wiped out sociocultural variation, all you've got left is biological differences. So, so, so you, well, you can draw your own conclusions from that. Um, it's unfortunate and fortunate at the same time. All right, so here's a Pareto distribution. This is the distribution. Remember I showed you with the creative achievement questionnaire that almost everybody stacked up at zero? People have zero creative output. The median person has zero lifetime creative output. And then there's a tiny proportion that are way the hell out on the you know, right-hand end of the distribution, right? Those are the people have, who have, everything is cycling forward for them. And as they get more well-known, of course, they get more opportunities as well. Con that person's very conscientious. So I just, I'll just run this simulation for you, okay? And, and this shows you why the Pareto distribution emerges. Now you have to watch this quickly because it's a fairly fast animation. So here's what happens. Everybody starts out with $10. There's a, there's a thousand people playing the game. Everybody starts out with $10. We, I have a dollar, you have a dollar, I flip a coin. If I get heads, you give me a dollar. If, if, you, if I get tails, I give you a dollar. We, we go around and we trade with everyone. Okay, so the first thing that happens when people start to trade is this. Normal distribution develops, right? Because some people lose and some people win. It's just like the golden board that I showed you. Okay, so you keep playing. People start to stack up at zero. Watch. Because they lose 10 times in a row. Bang, they're done. The bottom graph is a graph of the entropy of the distribution, which increases as the game continues. Because at the beginning, it's maximally ordered, right? Everybody has exactly the same amount. Now it's being distributed. Same equations apply to the distribution of gas into a vacuum. Well, what happens? Now someone, you know, there are people out there at the, at the $50 range, or at the $60 range, or at the $70 range. You keep playing it. Well, eventually what happens, if you play it right to its conclusion, is that one person ends up with all the money. So that's, to those who have everything, more will be given. From those who have nothing, everything will be taken. That's the law of economic productivity. It's called Matthew, it's the Matthew principle. Um, and it's actually an economic principle that was derived from a saying in the New Testament. I'll tell you some more about this on Tuesday, because I didn't get through all of it.